All right, all right, all right. It's Wednesday hump day tonight. It is. It is Wednesday, March 27, 24. How do you do? Welcome to Goofonia. Oh, we got a power outage over in the corner over there. Can't have that. We just got to fix that. So welcome to the show. We're going to talk about this, uh, this UAP thing here. I, I don't, you know, I don't know why. I don't know if I've ever talked about it before. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at it anyway. For prosperity. Glad you could hang out tonight here at the old Goofon show. That's right, everybody. One of the longest running UFO shows in history. No, I don't know. I'm just saying it. Could be. Maybe someday. We'll never beat Coast to Coast. What Art Bell did, he really molded the radio world into paranormal discussion. Without Art Bell, there would be no UFO talk at all. Without Art Bell, there would be no discussions at all. Yeah, I know now. This thing's getting out of control. Anyway, what does the UAP origin classification system really do? Not much. Come to find out. Oh, that was a good show. So what are you guys going to do the rest of your night? <laughs> ah, there's no rush. What am I rushing the show for? Where, what are we doing? You know, I, there's all these shows out there now. And they don't have like, there's a couple of shows that don't get shadow banned at all. And they're not that good. Not that good. Yeah, I'm not going to mention the names yet. But uh, I'm not a big fan. I know you guys are fans of these shows because I see you there. I see you, and that's okay. You want your fix. I get it. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm not surprised of the shadow ban. What I'm surprised is, no, because these shows aren't me. They're not going against the mainstream narrative that's why they suck up to what youtube wants them to do right we want you to say this we want you to love jeremy corbell we want you to love eleganza we want you to love ryan graves david fravor alex dietrich travis taylor and the rest of the funky bunch we want you to love them and talk nice don't call anybody names don't be disparaging. Don't be disrespectful. As a matter of fact, don't be human. Be a robot and let YouTube guide you because you're a beta chump host. You have no original thought. You have no original creativity and you lack entertaining skills. But YouTube loves you and you're getting popular by the minute. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, it pisses me off. Of course I'm pissed off. Pissed off all the time, YouTube. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, we don't shadow ban. Shut off. YouTube shadow bans are so obvious. There's so many videos of people proving it. Uh, anyway, anyway, that's that's the UFO world. I decided to go into my fault. Nobody else's, right? We'll just keep on rolling. That's all we can do. You know, keep on rolling. Because we do one thing here. Say it like it is. I say what you're thinking. And if not, well, I hope you're thinking it the next day. Yeah. 
I'm not going to be a chin fluencer like Eleganzo. I'll never be that level of love that a fraud can get. It's amazing. It's amazing. These people walk around like they're doing something good. And all along, we don't know what they're doing. We have no idea if they're really being heroes behind the scenes. Because I got to tell you, all we, you, me, and everybody else can go by are their actions in public, on shows, discussions, TED Talks, etc. So if Lou Eleganzo and everybody else are really here for disclosure, which we know they're not, but if they are, and they can't tell us what the real truth is, like, yeah, I have to spit out this threat narrative because if I don't sell this threat narrative to Congress and we don't get funding or any legislature that can help have these whistleblowers come forward and blah, 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 then I just didn't do my job. That, that, you know, it won't happen. But uh, let's do a little roll call and have a deeper discussion maybe some other time. I don't know. Maybe. Kelly Lewis, the EW, is here. Welcome to the show. David Wilcox, not Wilcox, is here. Welcome to this show. Stars and Night Vision, welcome to this show. Stephen A., everybody. Welcome to the show. Jeanette. Goofon, welcome to the show. Brooke is, what do you say to it, Chief? <laughs> Sam O, Goofonian rock star, welcome to the show. Laugh 007, welcome to the show. Marcel, Goofonian Matal head, welcome to the show. FAP, what do you be? How do you say? AG111 Star Child, Nikki Star Child, AG111. She's here to have some fun. Dun, 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 dun. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Hello, Paula Faust. Oh, Paula. It's so nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Andy C. Cowley. What do you say there? Met all head. What do you say there? Welcome to the show. Paul Richardson, welcome to the show. The Alfie Joe Bob, AJB, welcome to the show. The Impervious, David Wilcox, not Wilcox. Huh? Zoinks. Hey, Scoob, there's somebody on X. Oh, no way. <laughs> Ozzy Tiger, welcome to the show. Hey, everybody on X. <laughs> All right, let's get started. If I didn't say your name, doesn't mean I don't love you. It means we got a lot of show to do. Can't sit here and do intros all night. Bernie Muro, can't leave him out. Welcome. Anomalies and the real deal. So let's get going, shall we? I expect a normal amount of people to be here tonight, anywhere between and doesn't matter. You know, one second here. Let's get this show started with uh, a quick reminder of where we are in this world. Go! I said go! I the Department of Defense, ironically enough, to finish the very mission they gave me in the first place. I didn't ask for it. I'm not a UFO guy. I'm not a ufologist. I never have been. I never will be. I'm a counterterrorism and counterespionage guy. I just do counterintelligence, counterinsurgencies. That's what I do. And it just so happens... That in 2008, I was asked to apply those same skill sets into the UFO community. Da -da Love that. Da -da so I'm seeing this post several times around the internet. Reddit, X formerly known as Twitter, Facebook. 
Does anybody go to Facebook anymore? I don't even hear. Nobody ever mentions Facebook for anything. It is now the MySpace of social nothing. Hold on. So this is what I'm reading. One particular thing about the last few days is the number of cranks claiming they don't trust the government while simultaneously endorsing folks like Mellon, Elizondo, etc., 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 based on them being high-ranking government officials. Now, the weird thing is that post came out the day after we were talking about now you trust the government. Why do you trust the government? All of a sudden you're trusting. I mean, people are listening to Goofon and commenting with their, their thoughts without giving us credit for it. It's very strange. I've now seen that three times in the last two weeks. Blatant. And that's great. And that comes from uh, Danny Lavelle on X. But, you know, people listen. And then they have their own thoughts and they're like, you know what? That Goofon was right. You know, why do I trust the government? Elizondo and these guys, they're part of the government. You think, but hey, you know, he's right. Goofon is right. I'm going to sub to Goofon. Oh, I already am. Oh, they unsubbed me just now. So I've seen this comment and I have to say I'm very pleased because the words out. The infighting has begun on that side of ufology. See, the people on that who have shows in this field that are on that side of ufology aren't shadow banned. It's not right. It really sucks. Just because you have a, a, a different opinion, you're not. I'm not breaking any rules. We don't break any rules. We say everything that's, you know, or we wouldn't be here, right? But the shadow band's real. I can't believe this. Unbelievable. No way. If he blocked me, I'm going to be pissed. I got to check this out right now. Let me see something. He blocked me. I can't believe it. UFO sightings daily website blocked me on X because he posted some, he posted these rocks on Mars and says these are faces in the rocks and I oh no I mean on the moon. They, they were faces in rocks on the moon, not even Mars, on the moon. And they looked nothing like faces at all. And I, and I looked at it for a while because I'm like, what am I not seeing here? And it kind of looked, they kind of looked distorted and grumpy. It was just pareidolia. So that's all I said. I go, this is pareidolia at best. And he blocked me for that? What a pussy. You are, I hope you're watching. Because I'm not going to leave you alone. What a pussy. Uh, I, yeah, sorry, I said the P word. Get over it. Yeah, uh, I just can't believe this. Unbelievable. I've said a lot worse. <laughs> I told you, people are listening. Oh, what a baby. He is a baby. You know, eh, never mind. He's just a born loser. Everything he says, he's just like that Gina Chacharelli. What's her name? Gina Navratilova. You know, the one who always wears the NASA jacket. And she's really stupid. Annoyingly stupid. Her voice is like nails on a chalkboard. Stupid. It's she's the worst thing I've ever heard. Ever. Ever. Now, I mean that she's the worst of the worst. I mean, that's who he is, too. He's the same way. Everything is paranormal. Everything is a glitch in the matrix. Everything is net, 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 poltergeist, telekinesis, you know. Nothing's ever the winds blowing or just by chance. No coincidence has ever happened in their lives. It's never that way. 
Hey, if you want to help support Truthology for Ufology, you know what to do. All the links are in the show description. Super Chat, Super Sticker, PayPal, Cash App. Support the only one who will tell you the truth the way you need to hear it. Right here on GoFund. Oh, I can't believe UFO sightings daily. What a fruit biscuit. Yeah, you know what? Time to make a video about him, her. All right, next. I've been waiting to do a video on him, her. Introducing the Puppet Master, starring Susan Guff. Is it Go? Guff? Cough? Geek? As the Pentagon puppeteer and Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick as her clueless dummy. Have you seen this? It's from Uplifting Tweets. Yeah. Eh, a lot of originality went into that one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Good job. Good job. Next. Massive you. Massive. Massive. UFO captured by NASA's Helio viewer traversing the sun on November 27th, 2023. I don't know if we've seen this from Into Thin Air. But take a look at this Earth size object zipping past the sun at the speed of thought. <laughs> you know, hey, look at this thing. Yeah, supposedly, that's the size of the Earth. E-R-F. Huh? Earth. That's correct. Oh, all right. And there's another picture. Yeah, here it is. There it is. And there it goes. So it is going from north to south, and it is zipping at a speed of 185,000 miles per second. It is just slightly under the speed of light. How do I know? I don't. But it's just as good as that story. What are those things that are zipping by the sun? I think, I think they, you know, they're huge. I mean, that's nothing little. That is supposedly the size of the earth. So I always wondered, like, how does that, and where does it come from? <laughs> How does this happen? And look at the streaks behind it. These are not hoaxes. They're real. I am just, nobody knows what this anomaly is. So is it, what? maybe it's radio waves or what do they call those? It's some sort of uh, anomaly that maybe affects the camera. Or maybe these are just, Photons that are, you know, hitting, zipping by. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's so much fun, isn't it? Size of the earth. Size of the earth. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty big. Next! Going through some videos. Someone found this amazing UFO footage. Now, when I say the word amazing, I was being sarcastic. I know I said it with such a serious tone. You couldn't tell. But wait until you see this video. You're going to throw up all over. This has got to be the reason why. I can't, I, I can't even finish that thought. Just, just look at... Look, tell me what you see. Oh, yeah, that one. The one where he te did a test. Wow! Oh, Woo! It says test. No, it Do you test. see that? Yeah, but it says Holy test, Holy right? crap! That no, has got to really? be the greatest uh, UFO no sighting idea. in the history of UFOs. My goodness. Is that... Could it be? Cool. It okay. is! It's the ever-loving, infamous dot. Wow, does she zoom in? God, I hope so. Let's take a look. We've got three and a half over almost four minutes of this 
beautiful UFO sighting. That's right, kids. And and you know what's weird about this sighting? That nobody ever mentions in the whole video, by the way. There's a flashing next to it. And the flashing was occurring here before. But she's out of focus. She doesn't understand how to focus. It's a plane. I bet you a million bills. It's a plane. Well, look, there is the flash. Look at the flashes. Look at this around it. I'm telling you, she might have something for real and doesn't realize it. There's flashing going on in this area. Look, there's another one that just, there's another one that happened. Something unique is happening here. Look, but it's the worst UFO. Look at all of them. All these flashes happening. Are we looking at a piece of a larger? There was just a, a one up here. There was one right there. Did you just see it? I'll go back. Keep your eye to the to the five o'clock. Watch. Five o'clock from this object. Here it comes. There. See? I mean, those are significant. How? Uh, it's going to bleep and I'm going to miss it. I guess I didn't go back far enough. But they are there. And it is. I, I want to stop and prove it. Can you guys see those flashes I'm talking about? Watch over here. The 5 o'clock position. Yep. It is right there. Oh, I just missed it. Just missed it. Oh, I just missed it. Ah, my finger slipped off the... Oh, come on! There it is. Got it. See it? See it? Oh, what are they? And they're appearing all around. And mainly around this object. What did she get? She has no idea. This is phenomenal. I gotta let her know. You can't tell on your on your phone. You can't see those dots until you put it on a bigger screen. So I have it on a 40, and there was another one right behind it. This is amazing. I know it's boring to you. It It's just a dot, but there's something really going on here. And that dot seem to be moving it's hard to tell because she's moving but i thought it was moving earlier but it could just be her see she could take a step there was another flash right there again there was another one right here there it is again there it is again right there now there's another one two of them watch all the flashes behind it watch just watch in this general area the flashes now starting now there was two of them right there did you see that Ooh, right south. there there east. there there south there east. what is and going on east. another one and another one they're not happening over here over here they're only happening in this area oh this is so bizarre east no it's east not the north. camera it's not a glitch like that it's not I'm telling you i've seen this i've recorded the same flashes next to objects happens a lot I, and i don't know if it's like um the electricity coming off of the objects because they're using the earth's magnetic field maybe to to, to hover right so if they are using some sort of uh wave running device you know ride the waves the electromagnetic waves of the earth in the new sports model that that was my idea that uh, thanks bob we know i got royalties on that i'm sorry but you know that could be the sports model just sitting there riding the waves and then every now and then because of the electricity it's given off a, a little spark happens you know nearby you know only a theory but these flashes are they're meaningful to me anyway to me 
Oh, if she only knew how to- Oh, look at all the flashes happening! Did you see there was just three of them? I know, I'm overly excited. Watch this. Right here. Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my god, look at all of them. Watch it again. Watch around here. Here they come. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Wow, that is wicked cool. There was one way over here, too. One over here. So there's something here. I believe this light. I believe this dot is power source of a much bigger object. Maybe a triangle. That is bizarro. I am going to blow up that video. I'm going to put it in the editor and I'm going to make a video about it. I've never, ever seen so many flashes near an object. Nothing. Not even close to Usually you get two, three, but there is dozens here. Dozens. Just only in that vicinity. That is a weird sighting. That is a very good sighting. Terrible video. But a good video. Nonetheless, there's still some uh, data in there for us to grab. I'll do it. I was happy with that. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't notice those dots, those flashes on the cell phone when I got that video today. Not when I got it. Um, oh, no. Yeah, I want you to hear this, guys. You know, since weaponized... I just can't do weaponized. I, I got total burnout syndrome on that. And it just makes me sick. I decided to make myself even sicker by listening to Jim Simivan interview Tom DeLong on TTS Talks, they call it. TTS Talks. Uh, that's not even close to TED Talks. It's very similar with a T and three letters and the word talks, but uh, we'll play it anyway. And just want you to listen to a little bit. Jim Semivan continues his conversation with co-founder and visionary Tom DeLong, where they consider some of the biggest questions and theories about the phenomenon that have been posed by their favorite authors, advisors, and academics. Hey, Dick I'm Jim Semivan, and welcome to episode 13 of TTS Talks. Today, we are continuing our conversation with our special guest, Tom DeLong. Those of you who tuned in earlier for our episode 12 Thank heard you. Tom's viewpoints on a variety of aspects. Thank you, Dinkamazi, for your almost two years of service into the GoFund families. I appreciate your loyalties and your dedications. Almost two years, he says. I appreciate all the hard work, information, and great entertainment. Thanks, Richie. Emoji face smile. Emoji thumbs up. And I'd like to give my rectitude back to you and tell you it is nice to have done service to you and yours. You know what I mean. <laughs> all right. All right. I told you every now and then I got to make myself laugh. It didn't work. Aspects of the phenomenon and UAPs. And today, we want to continue that conversation and develop a better understanding of the mind of Tom DeLonge. So once again, here is musician, writer, director, actor, business... And a-hole! It's been entrepreneur and chairman of the board of To The Stars, Mr. Tom DeLonge. Tom, welcome back, and thanks for making... God, Jim Semivan is the worst. The worst. Taking the time to be with us today. You know, this is, uh, this is fun because, you know, when I met you, like, however many, six years ago. This is fun because, you know, no, I don't know. This is fun because, you know, nope. Or whatever it's been, we would just talk like this. I'm an entrepreneur and chairman of the board of To The Stars. Mr. Tom DeLong, Tom, welcome back, and thanks for making the time to be with us today. You know, this is uh, this is fun because you know when I met you, like however many six years ago or whatever it's been, we would just talk like this on the phone. 
But now we're just letting people kind of listen to our phone calls is basically what we're doing. Yeah, that's, 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 that's really a great way to put it. Uh, um, you know, last time we chatted, you know, we discussed your new movie, Monsters of California, your views about UAPs and the phenomenon, your relationship with the uh, quote unquote original advisors. You know, it's, it's really good to, to, to talk to you. You know, the last time we talked, it just, I should have fast forwarded to here. I forgot to do that. The UFO phenomenon is reflective. Now, Keel suggested as much when he stated that the observed manifestations of the UFO phenomenon seem to be deliberately tailored and adjusted to the individual beliefs and mental attitudes of the witnesses. Both the objects and their occupants appear to be able to adopt a multitude of forms, and the contactees are usually given information that conforms to their own beliefs. So, do you think it... Isn't that interesting? The experiencer gets information that is formed to their belief. No. He's got it backwards. He's got it backwards. See, when they're lying, making up their experience, it's their story they're putting in. Yeah, yeah, they, he got it backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love the way they just switch it around. Hey, Rich, you just said that uh, people are lying about their experiences. Uh, yeah, a lot of people do. I don't want to listen to this anymore. I, I got to tell you. Yeah, I don't have to. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. You know, I'll put the link to that in the show description just in case you would like to go further with that. I just, Jim Semivan puts me in a mood. You know, I'm serious. Tom DeLong, I don't mind. Tom DeLong is entertaining. But I don't want to listen to it. Not on your dime. It's your dime tonight, not me. Tomorrow's show is going to be a little interesting. Again, mainstream media is going to take the main plot of tomorrow on its fake news but we'll talk about why there's fake news i know what you're gonna say your knee-jerk reaction answer is to say well they want to run the narrative maybe but it's a lot more than that you know it's layered you know i don't know all the answers you don't either but it's not that hard to see what mainstream media has done over the last decade especially the last six years Especially the last six. Fake news. Fake news is real. I don't practice Trump's voice because I just, it's overdone. I, I probably could do it, I think, if I kept trying. You know, this isn't it. It's not over. Uh, so, remember the bridge that got ran into from that ocean liner the other day? People are saying... Oh, it's a conspiracy. They could, took some, they, somebody nefariously took control of the ship's computer and it was a cyber attack and they took the bridge down. You know, it, it, mm, it, there's some weird stuff going on. Did you know there was a second bridge that had an incident the day after? Yep. Yep. Doesn't seem like a cyber attack, seems more like a terror attack. But I would think they would go after more formidable bridges, especially not at middle of the night with hardly any traffic. If they're looking to make a point, you would do it during rush hour, I would think. Um, but there were more bridge issues. Hold on. Yep, a spontaneous combustion situation with raw wood products at a landscaping supply center caused a massive fire underneath the Valley View Bridge in Ohio early Tuesday morning. Ohio. Oh yeah, remember, uh, this is just a coincidence. <laughs> what is going on? They're trying to distract us. 
the FBI and Joe Biden have stated nothing unusual. Is Of course, what else are they going to say? Boats and airplanes are falling out, crashing in. People are... Uh, and and uh, social media fact checkers, mainstream media fact checkers, will not allow any debate on this. Isn't that amazing? They're restricting what you're allowed to debate in America. And you wonder why I'm starting a constitutional channel. You know, you get to a certain point in your life where you feel you haven't made your mark on society. I don't think this is going to cut it for me. 20 years in ufology? I don't know if I'm going to leave a footprint as big as I thought I, I would. But I want to leave one nonetheless. And uh, for a good cause. For a good cause. See, ufology? There is no cause. Yes, there is, Rich. You have it on your channel. The cause is truthology for ufology. Oh, is it? I think it's more like entertainment for ufology more than truthology because I don't think people care. I mean, you guys get it. Euphonians get it. The 14,030 of you get it. Even the haters get it. I won't admit it. Shit, what was I going to say? I started reading my own stuff. and Well, I just saw, and I, I was going to start the show off with this, and I just forgot. Did you know they're still investigating the Las Vegas aliens? Yep. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. There's a... Uh, what? All right. Well, I. Okay, this is weird. I had the article, right? I had an article. Now, when I clicked on it, it brought me to someone's video about it. I don't know this channel. It's it looks new. But I guess they're still investigating it. I'm not. Oh, wait, maybe this is the article I had. Okay, let's see. No. No. I'm not going to play somebody else's channel anymore. I'm just not doing it. If I don't know them, they're not friends of Goofon. But they're still investigating it, apparently. I'll look into that. I'm not interested to do that. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Oh! Scambian News! Scambian. I got to play it. I didn't know he was in court. Yeah, here he is, all dressed up. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. What kind of community service do you plan to do in California? Um, hopefully work with... I can't believe Scambian! What's he doing? Yeah. Unbelievable! It's Scambian! Holy crap! He's got camera on... Oh, wait, hold on. Marilyn Manson. That's Marilyn... Oh, I thought it was Scambian! Wow, it looks just like him, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks just like him. <sighs> All right, I thought it, was, it, it is a good Scambian, though. Look at that. Wow. Just as ugly. Oh, my God. It looked just like him. Huh? I think all guys are ugly. I'm not, <laughs> you know? 
I'm ugly. All right. Um, I got to play the stupidity. All right. Oh. <laughs> Hassan calls UFO whistleblower David Grush some effing quack crackhead UFO conspiracy guy. And I'm the bad guy? I'm the bad guy. Is Hassan part of the UFO cover-up, they ask. <laughs> Who cares? I, I wasn't looking for an answer or a quote from Hassan, whoever you are. But let's take a listen anyway, shall we? Skyfire News. It wasn't an accident. It was orchestrated as yet another distraction in a series of distractions on the testimony of Major David Grush. This was a planned demolition. What are you saying, dude? Yeah, dude, they planned to fucking blow up a, a key part of the infrastructure that connects like two fucking uh, parts of the uh, of this city. Yeah, they did that on purpose. Because of some fucking quack, uh, crackhead uh, UFO conspiracy guy that's like giving testimony on aliens. Yeah, I think I think that's not the reason. Hey, Jeff Garvey, how you doing? And I'm the bad guy. Hmm. And I'm the bad guy. Seems like there's a lot of bad boys out there. Right? A lot of people getting their brave on. You guys getting to 30 years old, feeling your oats, feeling like you're tough, right? Hey, how many UFOs have you captured? Uh, how many hours have you spent behind the camera? Oh, no, none. Oh, not none. No. First-hand experiencer? No. No. Any experiences? Oh, you, you walk through a haunted house once? Any dreams of aliens? Not even, huh? Nothing. So you're just sitting here calling people freaking crackhead quacks, and you have no affiliation, no experience or uh, uh, history, nothing. Not even holding a camera, going outside, trying to catch something. Not even inside. But yet they listen. Why? Because it's entertaining. Nobody cares about the truth. They'd rather that than the truth. Isn't it weird how things have changed? Now they're the mean people on that side now. They're the meanies. I've always been mean. Truthful is mean to them, just so you know. It's the way they switch it around. Yeah. Well, Rich, you call people jerks and idiots because they're lying to you. What? They're nice? What? The just because they they speak nice, you like their smile, you think they have a great shot at getting disclosure with fake stuff? I have to be nice. Just don't be disrespectful. Screw you. They're the ones that are being disrespectful to you. And you're an idiot if you believe it. I mean, come on. Point the finger at yourselves. That's what you guys need to do. If you believe in the narrative that that side is pushing is the legit one. Oh, wait. It's all falling apart now. Yeah, they're all infighting and people are walking out angry and conversations and podcasts. People are quitting and then all of a sudden they're back. Yeah, you know, oh, a lot of drama going on from such a uh, unified side of ufology and they all started fighting a year ago it's beautiful jeff garvey throwing down five dollars pure super dono right there bro hey that's the first one first one thank you very much i appreciate that yeah i wasn't paying attention thank you mucho gusto good to see you oh excuse me excuse me hey mule how you doing, Dan? Doing all right? Mm -hmm. 
He's throwing down the two, two, two. He's bad, bad, Richie G. Baddest man in ufology. Better than a hawking Kong. Meaner than a junkyard loo. He's a bad, 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 Leroy Brown. Baddest man in the world town. Thank you for bringing that up. I grew up with that song. We all did. Anybody over 48. Thank you, Moonway. Continuing supporter. Thank you for supporting the show. If you feel you want to help support Truthology for Ufology, not that it means anything because nobody really cares about the truth, all you have to do is just use the links in the show description to help support Truthology for Ufology. How do we do that? Truthology for Ufology. Oh, look at the U I made. Hey, Truthology for Ufology. What is that song? Come on, everybody, do the hand jive. Do, 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 do. It's your T for you. T for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Little Johnny. Let me tell you something, Ed. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Ed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ed. That's the only, only word I can say that sounds something like Johnny Carson. Ed. Johnny Carson. Ooh. What time is it? All right, we're almost there. What the heck is this? The other night. Oh, let's get into a little paranormal. Oh, I love this. All right, what I'm going to show you, in my opinion, is real, 100%. And you're going to see something that has been seen many times on video. I've seen it myself. Check this out. No, no, I, I really do think this is legit. It's a very short video, but you're going to see something really cool. In three, two, cool. Whoa, Oop. see that thing? Of course you see a bunch of dust too, but then this thing comes out of nowhere. That is what I'm talking about. This has been seen many, many times. Look at it. You know who saw this? That's right. The astronaut. What's his name? I forget his name. Not Buzz Aldrin. And then watch the orb that comes in right behind it. Shoots right there. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. It's dust, Rich. Don't be stoop. Nope. I don't believe this is dust. I believe this is part of something unknown to us. I really do. Because I've seen it. Other people have seen it. This thing, this worm-like thing has been seen in space. And it looks like it's going to disappear into the wall. Now, I know some of you are going to say, Rich, it's really close to the camera. It looks like it could just be maybe a hair that's in, and, and maybe there's a fan behind you, behind uh, the camera. Yeah, no. no. It's not that. Not that at all. It's weird. It's what it is. Paranormal. It was an entity of some sort. We're not, we don't understand. We just don't. And that's it. Bottom line. I know it's real. Yes, they're not in the field. You're right. People need to be in the field. Blank. Galaxy. I like that video. It's really cool. 
See, when I see something like that, it verifies what I know and what I've seen and captured. And when I see other people capturing something that looks exactly what I've captured, and I know I didn't fake anything or throw a hair in a fan or anything like that, then I see something legitimate. That's how you disseminate it to the public. You know from your experience, and then you tell the public, hey, I got it too. So do many other people. Now they say, oh, if he got it, they got it. They all got it. It must be real. And that's what we surmised here with that video. It is most likely a real entity, but where did it come from? And why did that astronaut see something like that in orbit around Earth? That snake that, yeah, I know, it didn't look, it, it just had the same motions. But, but nonetheless, people think now demons, aliens, they're connected. How do I do it? They're connected. <laughs> ah! Oh, I forgot something I wanted to do. Uh, still having a problem breathing. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, I think tomorrow I'll be back to normal. Well, as close as I can. I'm not working out tonight, though, that's for sure. I haven't worked out since last Thursday. I went to the gym. I forget what day. I think it was Friday after the show that I that I just came right home. I was just like out of it. 30 minutes later, I was asleep. All right. Uh, one really odd thing. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I want to show you. All right. All right. I'm so happy. I like this next video. It is also poltergeisty. And I got to fast forward it. Oh, I can't. This guy's just so annoying to listen to. But I'll play it anyway. Just, I like it. I think it's 100% real. What do you think when you see something like this? It takes this guy half this vid, 30 seconds to tell you to just look over here. Look in this area. On camera, do not watch this video if you are home alone right now. Because it's just way too freaky and you're not going to be able to deal with it. This mom is home. 39-year-old Amber is... Oh, yeah, but a guy wearing his baseball cap backwards with little life experience is going to tell you what you can't handle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Home with her baby daughter. You saw the baby sitting there in the crib, uh, sleeping. She's trying to, like, catch up on some TikToks or whatever, and everything's just, like, chilling. She's got the security camera in her room for safety measures. I want you to just um, bear with me here for a second because it gets a little crazy. This right here this area just pay attention to this area right here while no one else is in the room she's sitting there by herself the entire freaking blanket starts to move but then she notices it and it freaks her out obviously because the blanket just moved by itself and it's still moving and then she moves but this pillow right here i'm gonna zoom in he called it a pillow a pillow p-e-l-l-o a pillow I can't, that is a huge pet peeve of mine when people call pillows, pillows. People should never call pillows, pillows. If people are calling pillows, pillows, they don't know the English language because a pillow is not a pillow. There's no such thing as a pillow, people. Pillows and pillows, people, are two different things. If you think saying pillow and pillow are the same, because I had a friend named Todd who used to say pillow, and I'm like, you're saying pillow. It's pillow. I go, how do you say this? P-I-L-L, -L, pill. Okay. How do you say this? H-E-L-L, -L, hell. How do you say this? P-I-L-L-O, pillow. It's pillow. Now I think he's doing it on purpose. So I've always had this pet peeve. I don't know where it came from. It came from Todd. But a pillow is not a pillow, people. Please say it right. But that is a cool sighting. Very cool uh, capture, I should say, sighting. 
I was in my bedroom and I was searching with my binoculars and then lo and behold, there it was on my bed pillow. <laughs> yeah, you were, that is a weird one. And the head, the depression, I mean, that's even weirder. Unexplained things caught on camera. Do not watch this video if you are home alone right now because uh, it's just way too freaky and you're not going to be able to deal with it. This mom is home. 39-year-old Amber is home with her baby daughter. You saw the baby sitting there in the crib, uh, sleeping. She's trying to, like, catch up. on The baby sitting there in the crib sleeping. Is it just sitting there or is it laying down in the bed sleeping? You can't have both there, numb nuts. On some TikToks or whatever, and everything's just, like, chilling. Oh, I see. He's losing his hair. Yeah, I'm being a dick tonight. That's because that's from the world. Stupid videos. There's no news. Nothing going on. Talking about DeLong for cripe's sakes. DeLong. Let's just, you know, <laughs> let's do it. It is time. For a little bit of I to T A I to T A I to T A into thin air into thin air into thin air in five five four four three three two two one one engage. <laughs> and welcome back my friends a lot of people are waking up relieved this morning after a fairly large 5.7 earthquake originally downgraded from a 5.9 so almost a 6.0 as you can see here right off the coast of oregon now if we get in there and look at where the epicenter of this earthquake took place yes it's off the coast but not by much see this fault line here in the wanda fuca fracture zone is very significant and is said to be where the next big earthquake for the west coast is going to take place and it's about a hundred years overdue so in all reality when it comes to the san andreas fault line and then leading up to the Blanco fracture zone and so on and so forth. Once a big enough earthquake hits, it's going to affect all these fault lines. So the entire West Coast, including Canada, is going to have some history changing That's events true, in the Paul. Very near future. Now I know there is so much going on in the world right now. True. I have to interrupt. That's true statement, Paul Richardson. Okay, bye. It's hard to focus on one specific topic, and I'm going to do my best to keep it that way, but make sure you check out the X and Instagram pages, because I cover all sorts of topics that aren't exactly liked here on YouTube. So take that for what it's worth. And something interesting about this earthquake is, like I said, it was originally a 5.9, and then we had the downgrade to the 5.7, but this time the USGS is keeping that 5.7 magnitude, as we can see right here, but Volcano Discovery, which is usually more accurate with its magnitudes, has completely removed the 5.7 seven earthquake and only kept in its place as you could see here a 4.8 now i'm not sure what's going on here i don't know if the data is messed up but one is reporting a 4.8 and as we see right here the usgs is still at a 5.7 now after looking at all the user reports it is safe to say that this was in fact closer to a 6.0 so the 5.7 makes a lot of sense and once we get to strengths like that it's good to see things like this no tsunami warning advisory watch or threat but again take a look at the info they have here that they're basing it off of a 5.8 so we're having conflicting reports about where this earthquake lies as far as strength. I know they adjust them all the time, but the reports and the seismograph, as you can see right here, which is a little glitchy, it's missing some data, but definitely shows a very strong initial earthquake. You know, I've said this many times in many different videos on many different topics. It is very, very important, specifically now in these days where everything just seems so chaotic, like the world has just been completely flipped upside down. It's important to not get complacent to these types of things or think that nothing bad is ever going to happen to you because by that time it's already too late any sort of basic emergency plans can be the difference between life or not life so that is a message i can't stress enough in pretty much any video i make here and that is the ultimate goal to make sure that everyone that watches this is more and more educated about what they are all seeing right, because we all know it is becoming more and more difficult to sort through what is real and what is not all right everybody that is the basic info on this situation i'll have more updates later on in the afternoon i appreciate each and every one of you shout out to Canada and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.
I2TA with another earthquake report. Dorothy Hawkins throwing down a $5 super chat says, Rich at Goofons, a stand-up fellow, never rests his head on a pillow. You Truthology for ufology is where Rich stands, ever ready, camera in hand. Wavy line. Thanks. And see. Dorothy, well, that was very clever. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. A stand up fellow never rests his head on a pillow. <laughs> Truthology for ufology is where Rich stands. Ever ready camera in hand. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you, Dorothy. A continuing supporter of Goofon. Big sister. Dit dot. 55 on X, X, X. I got to get that echo chamber upgraded. Didn't I do that already over here? Let me see. I thought I had that here. Where is that thing that I have? Is... You know, we're going to wake up one day and hear this. Attention, attention, American citizens. This is an emergency broadcasts alert. This is not a drill. At 12.02 p.m. Standard Eastern Time, several objects were seen entering United States airspace. These are intercontinental. Wait a second. This is coming in. Can you turn the siren off for a second? <laughs> it may happen. It may happen. That'll be scary. Do you know what this is? Do you know what the, uh, the UAPC is? Do you know what it does? Anybody? It is the UAP Origin Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon something or another. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what's today? Wednesday? It is the UAP Origin Classification System. We should all know this, right? Oh, and for the person who made the comment about me shaving... I couldn't agree more. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me pull it up. What? Hold on, hold on. This has got to be it. Yeah, here it is. This is it. All right. I thought I've been here never. Check this out. This is the uh, the site, I guess. It says, and I read, the UAP origin classification system is a structured framework that organizes the wide array of hypotheses and theories proposed to explain the origins of UAP, UFOs. This taxonomy categorizes theories into three primary domains. Physical, psychosocial, PHS, I'm sorry, PSH, and metaphysical, MPH, based on their fundamental nature. By providing a systematic overview of the diverse range of explanations, this classification system can aid researchers, enthusiasts, and the general public in navigating and understanding the complex landscape of UAP origin theories. 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 Physical. These theories propose that UAPs have a physical real-world explanation, such as 
extraterrestrial spacecraft, advanced human-made technology, or natural phenomena. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. Do, do, do. So that's the physical. Can we... Okay, I, I, oh, well, 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 click on it. Oh, okay, I see. You click on it. You guys won't be able to see that. Oh, it worked. Oh, well, usually it does not switch the page. I can remember. All right, let me read this. Theories that attribute UAP sightings to tangible material objects or phenomena. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. Intra-dimensional theories suggesting that UAPs are manifestations or objects from dimensions or realms within our own physical reality. Intra-dimensional UAPs are manifestations. That means they, what class? They, they just appear. They manifest. They, 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 they become in visual, we see, to, right? So they manifest or objects from dimensions or realms within our own physical reality. Wait a minute. There's dimensions or realms in this reality. Wait, there can only be one reality at one time. So there's multiple dimensions in our reality. And outside our reality, you got to be effing Jesus. No. No. Prosaic. Right here. There are theories suggesting that UAPs can be explained by ordinary, mundane, or conventional phenomena. Dun, 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 dun. Phenomena. Dun, dun. Objects or processes without invoking exotic or extraordinary explanations. So they can only be explained by ordinary, mundane, or conventional phenomena. It's a little bit limited, isn't it, for prosaic? But I didn't make it up. Nor did I make up that UFOs and aliens are here. Natural, down here. Next one. Sub-theories proposing that UAPs are manifestations of natural phenomena, such as atmospheric effects, celestial objects, or poorly understood geological processes. I, you know, when I think of that, I think of Marfa. And then I think of lights. And then I think of Marfa lights. Natural, geological, because that's mostly what they think it is. Yeah? The Marfa lights? Anyone? Those are real, right? No? Oh, that's right. It's just cars going down the freeway at a distance of 15 miles. You just can't tell. No. No. The Marfa lights are. Next is optical artifact slash illusion, quote unquote. These are micro theories suggesting that some UAP sightings can be explained by optical artifacts, illusions, or other visual phenomena that uh, create misleading or misinterpreted images. Kind of like uh, uh, Fama, Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana. You no, know, I'm surprised. I'm surprised I remembered the name myself. I had to say it twice. Fata Morgana. Hey, watch your mouth. You talk about my mother like that again. What? Fata Morgana. Oh, oh okay. Celestial. Micro theories proposing that certain UAP reports may be attributed to celestial objects or phenomena such as planets, stars, comets, or meteors, etc. 
Meteorological, obviously. Geophysical, earthquakes, volcanic, ba -ba -da -ba -da. human, da -ba -da -ba -da. governmental, da -da 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 -da. Beep -ba -deep -ba -deep. I mean, this is, look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at all the different, look at it. Didn't we already say human? Didn't we already do human? Why are we doing it again? Why are we doing it again? Why are we doing it again? See, here it is again. Boop. I don't understand. Oh, I see. Because it's a different subcategory of a category. Here, this is extra dimensional now. Hyperspace, bulk, bulk. <laughs> Come on. There's some theory suggesting that UAPs could originate from a higher dimensional bulk or hyperspace, as proposed in some models of the universe, such as the Randall Sundra model. All right, do we get it now? You guys get it? I can't do this anymore. Yeah, all right. Here we get it. Who are the Congress members? Dude, I'm not the dude. Some of you will get that. Yeah, you know who you are. So this is real. Oh. 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 Uh. Not yet. Not yet. Let me play this for you. Let me entertain you. Let me make you smile. Everybody's talking about the earthquakes. You know? Check this out, though. Some people are capturing iridium flare satellites. Those iridium flare satellites are getting really interestingly popular all of a sudden. I guess off and on for, for several years, some sort of a mysterious object that appears to have some sort of a light above it. There are two lights there in this video. I'm going to zoom in, take a closer look, and then we're going to make some slight modifications. <clears throat> I think that was debunked as a plane or something like that. I remember seeing something like this. I just modify the lighting, not the color. In this case, there is no color to modify. This is a modified version of the original video, and you can clearly see there are two objects here, one larger, one smaller one. They claim that this behaves like some sort of a portal. Things fly in and... Oh, my God. That's just the pixelating, guys. That's nothing flying in and out out of it when they see it and they've been seeing this thing off and on for several years up in montana you can get that same effect with fire and this too is a modified format and you can see what looks like some sort of a oh come on bradbury you know that's not true Here we go again. More satellites. In the nighttime sky. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate that. That's it? Okay, this next video was sent in oh. by Bob. He had his camera pointing straight up into the nighttime sky. He was following this object right here. Watch what happens. This appears to be at an extremely high altitude. I'm not even sure this is inside the atmosphere. You can't Watch tell. what happens as he's following this object through the nighttime sky. It's not blinking. Wasn't making any noise. See that? Where's that thing come from? And yeah, you know, if by chance, you're going to see a shooting star. That's a shooting star. Let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy, all right? 
That's all it was. We're pointing straight up into the nighttime sky. He was following this object right here. Watch what happens. This appears to be at an extremely high altitude. I'm not even sure this is inside the atmosphere. Watch what happens as he's following this object through the nighttime sky. It's not blinking. Wasn't making any noise. See that? Where that? Th you know, I've captured twice recording an object and having a shooting star or an object like that fly through. I've shown it here. I've shown it here before. And they're identical objects that I captured. What are the odds? The odds are pretty interesting that that person was also recording a white object or an object and something flew near it, whether it was, has the whole sky. That little meteor asteroid could go to the whole sky, but it just happens to be right there. I would have never seen mine. Had I not been paying attention, you blink and they're gone. Uh, especially the one that I captured during the day. I, I think I still have them up on my, uh, let's see. I still have it if I. That's not it. Let's see if it's on this side. No, but I can get it real quick. I want to show it to you. It's fun. It is. It's interesting. It is. Yes, and I, I want to show it. I want to show you my goods. Oh, my goodness. Two identical objects, two different nights. Let's see if I can find it quick enough. Oh, all right, I'll bring you in. Sorry, I thought you guys were with me. Here we go. I'm looking for two, that's not it. Yeah, here it is. Oh no, I'm not going to be able to get it. It's not loading up. Let's see if it does anyway. Dang it. Why did it give it to me before though? I, I downloaded this video before. Let me see if I have it in my downloads. I think I do. I think I've got it. Yeah, let's take a look. Shit. All right, let's see. I bet I do. I bet I do. No? Okay. All right, there's some. Oh, okay. I'm going to get it. It's important you see coincidences may not be coincidences. Oh, I don't know who that is. TikToker. All right, here we go. Yeah, I, I must have deleted it off my own computer to open up space. And I figured it would be easy just to get off the Wayback Machine. And now I can't get it off the Wayback Machine. That is just weird. I'm looking, I think I may have it here. Is this it? No. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, that makes me a little bit sad. Yeah, I don't know why I wouldn't have it here. Still looking. Wow, I didn't know I had these videos here. 
You know, when you go back and you're like, oh, geez, this is a few years ago. Holy mackerel, I don't remember any of these videos. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, we've got some good things to go over. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh, uh, well, anyway, I, I don't have it. Pass the ball. What is this? What is this? Okay, never mind. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Hey, when do we ever have any downtime here? It's very rare. It's very rare we have any downtime on Goof on Shows. <laughs> it's true, though. All right. So let's not get crazy. Uh, so much to go over still. A lot of stuff to go over. Um, so what is this thing? This website that they have. What is it? Does it mean anything? What is it? What is it doing? It's just theories. That's all this is. It's theories on what each object could be. They categorized it. And they just simplified everything they could do. That should be in arrow. Yeah, why isn't this an arrow? This should be a part of arrow. Uh, isn't this the uh, UAP origin thing? Isn't this the OCS just for military stuff? UAPs? Has nothing to do with um, civilians. So I don't know why. I don't know why it wouldn't be. So David Brush has firsthand experience, this title says. Really? He was part of an extremely secret program that had figured out how to track and find UAPs in our atmosphere and near Earth orbit. Who believes that? Who believes that? David Grush is a zero. See, you know what they're doing now? This is dummying down. Is what they're doing now. They're dummying everything down. Now, what they're doing is they're trying to show you and me how stupid we are. By creating this image of him as someone who is an experiencer with first-hand knowledge, because that was the biggest problem we have with David Grush. So now, all this is, this is trying to make it seem like, yeah, he got his hands dirty, he's seen some stuff. Nope, too late. You can't say that now. Nope. I don't care what, I don't care what he says this day forward, actually, since that day forward, hearsay. And now they're trying to say, oh, wait, hold on. He does have a firsthand experience. He was part of a extremely secret program. <laughs> Nobody knew. A tip, OSAP, crap. He was part of something. This guy right here. Or is it this way? Is it this way? I don't know. Yeah. So stupid. A little late. A little late with the credibility. Oops. 
Sorry. Not buying it. Isn't that cute? They're trying to spin it. They're trying to spin him into a likable, believable guy because they don't have anybody else that could take his place. And if they did, it would be too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Well, if they got rid of Grush and brought in somebody else while he was already here, that would seem like they've been, you know, then it's all fixed. Like, oh, they already had this guy on the ready. What is this? Hold on a second. Into thin air. Is this another video? Oh, talking about the bridge, the collapse of the bridge. Okay, okay. Yeah, a little bit uh, too sketch for YouTube. I don't know yet about that. I don't know. All right. I uh, want to show you some uh, interesting videos. You've got to see this. This is the classic male Karen. You've never seen anybody do a male Karen better than this guy. Seriously. There's head shake. There's attitude. There's hand on the hips, I think. You get it all with, with Darren, the male Karen. The best one I've seen in a while. I'm fishing. There's no fishing here. Uh, I don't see no sign. This is a private pond. Do you I live don't. in this neighborhood? Uh, no, I don't. Leave right now. Watch his head. Sir, if you do not leave right now, I'm going to call the cops on you. Do you okay. understand me? All right. I'm going to get in here, okay? No. Leave. <laughs> I'm going to wait right here. Okay. Okay. Right. My, I left my phone in my car. I'm going to go get my phone, and I'm going to call the cops on you. This is not a joke. Okay. Does it look right. like I'm joking right now? <laughs> I had to show that because, you know, when he did that, it was just, it was fun. Yes, men have turned into Darren's. What is this? This says big liar. Oh, this guy is full of shit. I interviewed this guy at his home. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> I can't remember his name. Um, uh, Major A Hole. I can't remember. But this guy lives in fantasy land. And everybody in the UFO community, including yourself, as soon as you see his face, you're going to say, no, no, Rich, you're wrong. Nope. This guy loves the camera. Robert Dean. Robert O. Dean, to be exact. Thank you for remembering, Rich. He says, uh, well, he doesn't. But watch who he interviews. And you'll see why. Study was concluded in 64. They concluded that there were four different groups apparently coming and visiting us. Out of those four different groups, one group looked exactly like we do. So much so that they could sit beside you in a restaurant or in an airplane or in a theater. And you'd never. In an airplane. Did you hear what he just said? In an airplane. How many times did we see that last year? You see how they're trying to connect the narrative to what other people said? You wouldn't know it if they were sitting right next to you. Church, work, right? You wouldn't know it. It looked just like you and me. They kind of do, but they are so perfect. You would think they were wearing a mask. There's nobody walking around like this. I promise. Because I would have seen it. <laughs> it can't happen unless I see it. Never know. Some of these people from somewhere could be walking up and down the corridors of Shape Headquarters, or they could be walking up and down the corridors of the Pentagon. 
One day at lunch, a lieutenant colonel made the remark, he says, Jesus, do you realize they could even be in the White House? What do they look like? They look like us. I think that they were created or summoned, whatever, uh, brought in because um, I was so combative because of my fear of these uh, creatures that did not look human. Let's say that they knew for a fact that aliens are walking among us, quite literally. They are, they are appearing as people, but they're they not people. They could be avatars, for example. Avatars would walk among us. And we wouldn't know that they're we not a real person. That was the basis of the movie. We saw it. I mean, they're just like the aliens. It's an easy thing to say because you can't prove it. How can you? Point it out in public and, and tell if somebody came up to me and said, you're an alien. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. If somebody was insisting that I was, how weird would that be? Right? What if somebody just all of a sudden just decided that you were an alien? Because bad information like this gets out there and people start having their imagination work. Because what have we heard? The aliens look like us. We've also heard the aliens are unimaginable, that if we actually saw what they looked like, it would turn your hair white. You'd be so scared. Oh, it's okay for you to look at the aliens, but we, us little peon human aliens, uh, civilians wouldn't be able to understand. But you, yeah, give me a break. See, nothing ever matches. Nothing ever makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, it's not really happening. And what, have, what else have we heard? They live on the moon. They're on Mars. They're, they're all over the, the, our solar system, right? They're in the Antarctic. They're underground. They're in Area 51 and 52. Uh... You know, they're at uh, Grumman, they're, they're at Malmstrom, they're at Luke, you know, they're the, the Tic Tac and the, you know, it just goes, it never ends. And with all of this going on, we don't have anything really tangible on, on a recording that we could prove. Eight billion people, eight billion cameras minimum 8 billion and then you got another 15 to 20 billion security cameras covering the planet and then you got satellites and then you got norad when does it end you also have astronomers all over the planet you've got sky watchers looking up all the time where are they if it was that if there were that many aliens hanging out, we would have had it on video. I mean, real, somebody in their car seeing a UFO video and other people getting out, recording an object in the sky, maybe landed, whatever. Shit like that. After all the things we've heard over the years, Crash Saucer, Socorro, Kecksburg, Kingman, Arizona, all the crashed places, you know, Roswell and uh, Brazil, you know, all that fighting and the war in 77. Where's all that evidence and video? And, you know, aliens were there for two weeks fighting the Brazilians. So we should have had something very significant now yes there are ufos we have seen video no scratch it we have seen a real ufo in a picture foo fighters totally legit 100 percent ufo activity captured legitimate Fireballs, balls of fire, chasing our own, chasing the adversaries and allies. We all thought they were each other's secret weapon. 
They were doing circles around our crafts while we're just there go ving 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 doing donuts around us. Right? Vietnam. Come on now. It never ends. Where's the evidence? Makes you wonder. It's not evidence. Nope. It's not real. Did it? It's not alien. It's us. Now, I think what happened is we found uh, something in an archaeological dig. Ancient, ancient. Maybe it was here all along. Maybe we, they found it in Iraq when they went, you know, to Afghanistan to get all that. Actually, I think that was more poppy seeds than it was about a Stargate. And I'm not sure if we're still there guarding the Stargate that's supposedly in Iraq. But um, I heard a lot of different things. It was either Stargate, poppy seeds taken with Tic Tacs, or Stargate, or it could have been both. Could have been both. Yeah, maybe. However, uh, still searching for that evidence. Tangible. Real. Feel it. Was that malleable? Ma malleable? How do you, is it, what is that? Malleable? Ma <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, you've got to see this video. This, I, you know, this might be something I would have done in my younger years. If I would have grown up around, this is really unbelievably fast. And I didn't realize it would be this fast. Look at this. Wing guys, those wing suits. It's the wind suit league in China. Watch how fast he goes by. Nice. Jesus. Isn't that fast? Watch it again. Nice. Pretty cool. Pretty, 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 pretty cool. Next, this is creepy. I think you'll enjoy this. Oh, I don't like this at all. Oh, I, I don't like this at all. I think this is a legitimate creature. What you're going to see is a woman who found a hole in the basement in the wall and, and saw an eye looking back at her shines a flashlight at it and it doesn't look like a human eye yeah you're gonna say it's fake and everything go ahead i don't think this is fake i think it's real i think this is really really weird i don't know i believe a lot lately in this <laughs> i don't know why i maybe because i want to go watching her and when she turned around she saw this a woman was working at this mechanic shop in saltillo mexico when she felt like she was being watched and so she looked around and saw this creepy eye staring at her from inside the wall. Oh, it doesn't even move. Look, it looks weird. And it blinks, watch. Blink. Go, blink. Whatever it was, it didn't move or make a sound, even after she tried banging on the wall to scare it away. It finally disappeared after five minutes, but they still don't know what it was or where it went. She felt like someone was watching her, and when she turned around... Look at that. It blinks though. The eye is even like got a, like a cat's eye. It's like a reptilian. She saw this. See it? That's real, man. That thing really blinked. Oh. That's just creepy cool. I like creepy. It makes me feel alive. Uh, oh, some of you are golf fanatics, I found out. 
Some of you know who the what? Well, maybe arguably the greatest golfer of all time, Jack Nicholas. Well, I got to show you this. This only the greatest golfers or the greatest can do this when it matters most in front of when they call. He calls it yeah. out. Why? He said a good putt. It, 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 there's no Let chance. Let me show you I'll, how to putt it. You can't. There you go. Yeah, show me how to do it. I remember watching that, me and my dad. Yep. Remember those. That little nostalgia goes a long way for me. So a lot of people are going to watch Joe, uh, um, Joe, Mike Tyson fight Jake Paul, Paul Logan, Logan Paul. I don't know. I don't think Tyson will do great after the second round. I think in the first and second round, Tyson will start strong for a minute and then fade. Three years ago when he fought Roy Jones Jr., he was so tired after the second round. I mean, they both were. He was 55 back then. He's going to be 58. Doesn't look, if Tyson doesn't knock him out in the first two rounds, he gets knocked out, and I'll be mad. You yeah. rip into the body and throwing those hooks. I was like, this is a man who's preparing to go to combat. This is not normal getting ready to work out shit. That's why when I saw that video, I was like, oh. Let me tell you something uh, about that video. Yeah. I did that video and I was in bed for a week. <laughs> that was 30 seconds and I was in bed for a week. <laughs> and it's not funny because it made me realize that this is, this is, this is big boy shit, okay? He was so sore from 30 seconds of working out. At 57 years old. He knows it's going to be tough. But it'll be fun to see if Tyson if Tyson wins. See, they should fix it. They should fix it where Tyson knocks him out. In like the, the second to last round or something. <sighs> I have this video here. not going to play it again. I'm not going to play it yet. I'm not going to play it yet. So I'm going to show you a one minute clip. One of the, I'm just letting some people know, letting you know with, cause there's going to be a new channel coming up. I'm not telling anybody what it is. You can find it. I'll be anonymous. You won't know. But this is what I'm going to be doing just to give you an idea. Understanding of that statute they're referencing there is it applies to concealed carry arms and not open carry. Huh? Is that correct? Uh-huh. Well, this gentleman's telling me it's against the law. I'd like to be able to go into the public building here and take a look around. Can't. Why is that? No firearms allowed in the building. That's not what that statute says. That statute specifically exempts open carry. Okay. It only applies to concealed carry. No firearms in this building. So you're not going to go by the statute? No. No, you're just going to go by whatever Mark here wants to do? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. So I need your business card, if you don't mind, please. Then I'm going to go over and speak to your chief. I don't have any business cards, but you can go talk to the so chief. So it's light key? Lead key. Lead key. Okay. And you three, realize that you're wrong, right? Three, five, three. Do you realize you're mistaken? Are you, just, are you just here enforcing his feelings, or are you enforcing the law? What? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Stupid. What a dick. See, he's allowed to go in there with this firearm, and they have an outdated statute, or they're misreading the statute, allowing him to bring his firearm into that building. And... He has the evidence there. The cop won't read it. it, it it'll 
well any problems he has. And the only reason he doesn't, he's not letting him go into the building because the security guard thinks he's right that he's not allowed in the building. So he's just enforcing feelings instead of the law. And that's not what I don't, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> so I'm going to be putting it to the test myself. This is kind of what I'm going out there doing. And, uh, You'll know. I'll 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 just say the channel's up. I'm not gonna give the name out though. I want it to grow naturally. I want to see what happens. I also don't I also don't want ufology getting mixed up and getting me shadow banned on the uh, you know on that channel. And I don't know if they go by IP addresses, shadow banning all your channels. You know, it might be, we'll find out. Anyway, thanks for hanging out tonight. Uh, it went by pretty quick. Um, tomorrow we'll be back and do it again, 7 p.m. And I guess AG111, Alien Girl's up back up in the morning. I don't know if she's doing the Twitter or the YouTube, but 7 a.m. nonetheless. We'll be back manana at 7 p.m. ourselves. What do we do here every single night of the year? Every single day we breathe? Truthology for ufology for you. <coughs> I had a cough so bad. I had heartburn. And I had a... Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you very much, moderators and super chatters. Way to help support time and, and energy. And uh, newcomers and veterans, thanks for making this a fun chat. And we'll see you tomorrow. If you ain't looking up, you ain't looking out. Remember that? Uh, alien bless. Why did it die without treasure sites in Christianity?